Hi there, Greg Arnold, rendering specialist at Autodesk. And in this session, I'd like to go over how to render bifrost strands with the Arnold Toon Shader. Okay, so just start off by showing some of the renders I produced using bifrost with the Toon Shader. You can see you can get uh, very complex patterns using this technique, combining Toon strands with fields. If we zoom in, we can see. The uh, Toon Shader adds a lot to the illustrative style of the, the render. You get some very interesting swirls and patterns quite uh, quickly and easily using this, this technique. Also we'll be covering how to create the shading using a utility shader and also cover lighting as well. Okay, so before we begin, uh, I just want to encourage you to install and use the latest Arnold plugin. Go to the Arnold Renderer website, go to Arnold and then download. And it'll show you the latest version of MTA that you want to use. You can download it here. And if we go to the release notes, it'll take you to the MTA documentation, the latest plugin. And you'll see it gets 422. Yeah, so since 422, Important optimizations for, for tune shading. Optimized, especially for Windows machines with many cores. Sometimes, some situations we've seen a four times speed up. So that's previous versions, and this is 42. Once you've installed the latest plugin, you want to go into Maya, make sure it's loaded correctly. So, under the plugin manager, uh, we've got M2A Maya to Arnold, make sure that's loaded. And you can go to render settings and see the Arnold renderer there. Okay, so I've got a new scene here and I've got the Bifrost Graph Editor. That's Windows Bifrost Graph Editor. And for this example, we're going to start off with a preset scene in the Bifrost browser. So go to Windows Bifrost Browser and that should open up the browser. And under Fields, it's a Hurricane Noise Strand Scene. Just double click on that. That should bring the scene into Maya. So by default, it's using a, a mesh plane. It's creating a mesh plane to distribute these st strands. We'd rather use a, a, a 3D object to uh, distribute the strands. So let's create a sphere. It's just a polygon and a sphere. And then if you middle drag the sphere into the Bifrost graph editor, and then just connect the mesh to the input. Just delete the plane. Okay, and then you can just hide the sphere for now. So we just see the strands. Now we don't have many strands at the moment, so we're going to use a, a scatter points to, to create more strands. So if we click the points to the input and the mesh to the geometry, and then under the scatter, we can change the amount. So maybe something like 4,000. So now if we increase the scale of the sphere, you should notice that uh, changes the scale of the strands and, and how they react to the field, the fractal noise field that we have here. Let's so just scale it up a bit. Um, and then if you look at the fractal noise field, we can uh, change the seed. You should notice it uh, randomly changes the strands. However, the strands sticking quite closely to the sphere. If you look at the original renders, you see the, the, strands, are, the strands are quite loose and organic. Kind of more random and there's a lot more noise going on. So if we get back to the fractal noise field and just increase the magnitude, something like three, you should see it pushing out the, the strands more, maybe four even. If we go to the vector field, at the moment it's set up to Y up from, for the plane. If we add one, notice them spread out a bit more. Let's start create some lighting and start rendering so we can uh, work on the shading. So just create a directional light. 
and then under Rendra, just create Arnold. So now for shading, I'm going to open up the node editor. Just drag that here so we can look at the shading. We've got a black background. Let's, let's make it white background. So under the render settings, environment, background. Let's create a race switch shader there. And then the attribute editor, make the camera white. And then let's create our tune shader for the strands. And then just select the Bifrost node and sign in the tune shader. Now it's all very thin at the moment. If we zoom in a bit, the strands are quite thin. If we go back to the Bifrost, Bifrost graph editor, we go to the size profile, they're quite thin, so we just increase that to 0.01, you can see it's thicker there. And then enter mission. We can connect a utility shader here that'll give us interesting colours. Uh, change mode to flat because we just want pure colour. And we can change this colour mode to whatever you want, but I uh, quite like bad UVs. And then increase the emission weight. Try experimenting with different uh, color modes to, uh, according to your preference. It's a bit too saturated here, so I'm just going to create a color correct shader so we can desaturate it. So that's to the emission color and the utility into the input of the color correct. And I'm just going to desaturate those slightly. And um, we can also multiply colors. So we can add a little bit of red in there. Now we're getting, not getting any edges on the, the tune shape if on the, the strands. If we look at the original renders, you can see a sort of dark tune edge. That's because we haven't set the filter type to contour. So we go to the render settings, uh, filter, Type is Gaussian by default. If you just change that to contour, you should uh, start to see the, the two images on the strands. So we're getting there. I think the sort of look a bit black, depending on the width of the contour, we can always reduce that width to thin the two images out. It all depends on the resolution of the image. So if we zoom out, it's going to show a lot more black because the the width's so high but if we zoom in a bit more the tune width isn't so high just bear that in mind when you're rendering at different resolutions you may have to change this tune width you can also change it through the tune shader so at, uh, the edge we've got width scaling here so we can reduce it even further in fact let's do that let's put it back to two and then change it through the shader so maybe 0.5 for the width scaling i can also change the color of the edge so if you don't like black could we just make it um, a similar color to the main shading just dark it down dark it down a bit so it's not so harsh also bear in mind with the render settings um, We've got progressive render disabled. If you have, if you've rend if you have it enabled when rendering too, and it can look a bit noisy, but uh, when it's you see when it's when it's doing the IPR, the build up of the tune edges can be a look a bit noisy. But without it, it looks a bit looks a bit cleaner uh, when you're test rendering with the IPR. So I'm um, just gonna go back to the Microfrost Microfrost Graph Editor. And go to the scatter by number. Maybe we need to increase this a bit to um, get some more strands. So something like 10,000. Zoom in a bit more. And we don't have any specular on the tune edge. So let's have the other tune shader. So let's go back to the tune. And we've got specular. So let's increase the specular. 
And then under stylized highlight, we can use the directional light to create an interesting specular highlight. So if you just copy text, the directional light shape that you want to use for the stylized highlight, copy the text and paste it into the lights of the stylized highlight. And then you may need to just rotate the light just to get something a bit more interesting. And then if we increase the roughness a bit, because it's quite harsh at the moment. And you can always play around with the stylized highlight size, depending on your, your preference. I don't quite like the white, so I'm going to plug the color shading we use for the emission into the specular color. Maybe that might look a bit better. Yeah, so now we're getting a softer, less intense highlight there. Okay, um, go back to the Bifrost Graph Editor, and we've got the seed value on the Bifrost Noise Field. So we can change the seed value and get some different uh, results. And it's quite nice to keyframe this attribute uh, and then just set off an animation and then you can come back and you see all sorts of uh, strange and interesting patterns and choose which one you like the best. Uh, yeah, the way to do that is to create an input and then connect that to the seed of the fractal noise field. And then if we select the Bifrost Go down, you can see we can now keyframe the seed value. So on the time slider, maybe just keyframe that at frame zero and then jump to 120, change that to 120. So now when we render the animation, it should. So look, oh, didn't set the key. So go to the output. Oh, I've got two, three keys now. <laughs> uh, let's just delete that one. So yeah, now it should be that. Okay, I'm gonna put these to linear so we don't just get the oh, straight up. Animation. So now we can see it's changing every frame. Maybe you want to increase the exposure of the lighting. Brighter. And I think we're pretty much there. So finally, here's an animation I created that just keyframed the rotation of the Bifrost and animated the seed value to get this effect. Okay, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.